Okay, good morning. And let's get started with first section, real numbers for Algebra 2. All right, so here's our objectives. You can read through these, but we're going to classify real numbers and work all the way through applying the properties of real numbers. Two big conceptual objectives. Let's understand that rational and irrational numbers, and we'll explain what those are, are mutually exclusive. That means that they something can't be both at the same time. And complementary subsets, that means that the two of them add up to everything of real numbers. And then we need to review and learn the properties of the order of operations for real numbers. Okay, so let's go through here. So I've taken the summary to break us down into all the things we need to go through. We're going to start by talking about real numbers and the set of all rational and irrational numbers. Okay, And then we're going to talk about decimals are approximated by either truncated, truncating or rounding. So let's talk about that real quick. Truncating is you need to eliminate all the values after a particular digit. So if I say truncate to two digits and it was 1.2345, we would just say 1.23. That'd be truncated to two digits. Okay. And then rounding, we've rounded before. If I said let's round 1.23 to the nearest whole number, we would round it down to one. Okay. All right, let's look at the sets of numbers. So we have a, a couple different sets here. We're going to start at the top with real numbers. All right. So real numbers are all of the rational and irrational numbers. So let's talk about what a rational and an irrational number is. A rational number is a decimal that either terminates or it repeats. An irrational number is a number who does not terminate or repeat. Okay, so got some examples here, and we'll go through those problems in a second. All right, integers, whole numbers, or negative natural numbers. So anything that does not have a decimal on it could be zero, it could be a negative, it could be a positive. Okay, whole numbers starting at zero and just the positives, no decimals. And then the whole natural numbers, no zero starting at one, just going forward. Okay, so let's classify some here. So if we have this list, which ones are rational and which ones are irrational? So remember, rational. It either stops, a decimal that stops, or that repeats. So, for instance, 6.66666, the little bar says it repeats forever. That's going to be rational because it repeats. And terminating, we could say something like even negative 3 is going to be rational because that's negative 3.0. It stops. Okay? So the rational numbers would be everything except for the square root of 3 and pi. Right, pi is 3.14159, et cetera, et cetera. All right, it's not repeating and it's not stopping. All right, your turn. Let's classify the following real numbers as rational or irrational. So pause the video for a second, make sure you can do these, and I'll put the answer up in one second. Okay, let's figure out which ones are rational. Negative seven thirds, rational. This is repeating, so it's rational. 12, rational, 0, rational, negative 5.27, it stops, it's rational. Square root of 5, irrational. And this one here, dot, 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 repeating. Is it repeating? Not really, it's 1, 0, and then 2, zeros and then 3, zeros. So these two right here are the irrational, and everything else was rational. Hope you got that right. Okay, let's talk about rounding and truncating. So let's jump straight to the example. I think you guys can... Get this. Okay. So approximate 23.02492 to two decimal places by truncating first and then by rounding. Okay, if you truncated, it's 23.02. And then rounding, it's 23.02. Also, it's going to round to the exact same thing. Okay. Better example, I think, is this one here, 17.368. If you truncate, you just cut it off. Truncated would be 17.36. If you round, it would round up to 17.37. Okay, order of operations. I think we may have seen this before. PEMDAS. Parentheses. And then the one that's not on the list here, exponents. And then multiplication and division, left to right. And then adding and subtracting, left to right. So subtracting can come in front of Adding division can come in front of multiplying, right? We just work left to right. So take a second, see if you can solve these in order using the order of operation. 
Okay, so what are we going to look for first on here? We're going to look for the multiplying first. That comes before adding and subtracting. So this would be negative 7 plus 20, 4 times 5, minus 2 times 6 is 12, plus 9. And then negative 7 plus 20 is 13, minus 12 plus 9. 13 minus 12 is 1. And 1 plus 9 is 10. Okay. This is 9 minus 6. And when it's in a fraction, you can put parentheses around it divided by 2 times 5 plus 6. So this is going to be 3 divided by 2 times 5 is 10 plus 6. Right? So this is going to be 3 divided by 16. So it will be 3 over 16. Okay? So I'll take a second to see if you can get one as well. Okay, so let's work from the inside out on these parentheses because we got to do parentheses first. So brackets are just the same as parentheses. They're just a different way so we can look a little bit different. So negative 3 times, let's work from the inside out. 13 minus 5 is 8 plus 4 times 3. And now we can do the multiplication. 2, negative 3 times 8 is negative 24 plus 4 times 3 is 12. 2 times negative 24 plus 12 is negative 12. And so 2 times negative 12 is negative 24. Okay, we have all the properties of real numbers listed here. So you probably have seen these before in algebra. I'm not going to go through every single one here, but the big ones here that we really need to talk about are the distributive property. Okay? So distributive property, 5 times 8 minus 3, that 5 gets to distribute into both places. So we would have 40 minus 15 and we would end up with 25. Now, we obviously could have done the order of operations first, 5 times 8 minus 3 is 5, and gotten 25 as well. Okay. We're going to distribute a lot this year. So let's use some of these properties and see if we can evaluate some of that algebraic expressions. So give these a shot real quick. If we did this correctly, we would have 6 times 2 is 4, which is 12 plus 4, which is 16. and if we distribute this, 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 3 is 6. And same thing here, 5y minus 5 times 3 is 15. Okay. Now, just be careful here. A common mistake, when we have the negative on the outside, right? Distributing the negative. So what happens here? This negative gets distributed to both. So negative times a positive is a negative 2x, and a negative times the negative is a positive. So the correct answer here is negative 2x plus 3y. Very common mistake to forget about distributing that negative with the second negative and end up with negative 2x minus 3y. Just be careful there. All right, try these two here. Correct answer, negative 2x. Negative distributes minus 2 times 5 is 10y. And then we'd have negative 3y plus and negative times a negative positive 2b. All right, so again, we have our negative properties here. I'm not going to talk about them too much other than this one right here with the fractions. So negative A over B, so something like negative 5 over 3, can be written as negative 5 over 3. You can pull the negative out front. And that's the same as 5 over negative 3. Notice that in each one, there's only one negative. Okay? So we'll keep that throughout the year. Okay? And remember that if you times by 0, you get 0. Anything times zero is zero, and anything divided by zero is undefined. Cannot divide by zero and get a real number. All right, and then we need to talk about fractions real quickly, just to review. So if we are adding 5 thirds plus, let's say, 6 halves, something like that, right? The common denominator is what we need. The common denominator is going to be 6, 3 times 2, right? And then we can multiply across. 5 times 2 is 10. And 3 times 6 is 18. So we would end up with 28 over 6. And can we reduce this? I think we can. So we're always going to re reduce in this class. 14 thirds is what we would end up with. All right. And then we never, ever, ever divide fractions. Instead, we multiply by the reciprocal. 5 thirds divided by, uh, let's say, 1 half. Instead, we're going to say 5 thirds times 2 over 1 up over the second one, and then when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. 5 times 2 is 10, 3 times 1 is 3. Okay. 
All right, so all of those are in here. You can pause this and get these down if you want to. This is in your textbook, right? But just a quick review of some fractional properties. All right, so let's review our fractions, see if you can do these. Let's see what we got. So on this one, common denominator is 10. 3 times 2 is 6. 5 times 1 is 5. So here we would have 11 over 10. On our next one, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to say 1 over 5 times 10 over 3 and multiply straight across 10 over 15. Can you reduce that? 2 over 3, right? Because you can divide both of them by 5. And last one, 2 over 3 minus x over 5. So common denominator here is going to be 15. And we'll have 2 times 5 is 10. And 3 times x is 3x. So 10 minus 3x over 15, finally. Okay. All right, that's it. Hopefully you got those notes down. And any questions, we're going to go over those in class, and we'll see you tomorrow.